Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Twin Carbs. And uh, this is going to be quite an exciting moment, really, um, because I've finally received my new CETA Smart 7 uh, EV charger. Now, I've been um, looking forward to this for some time. Uh, CETA are a Scottish-based company um, who have spent the past couple of years developing uh, this smart charger. Uh, quite a lot of features, which uh, <coughs> we'll, we'll touch on as we go through. Um, it does also have all of the electrical protection built in that uh, that you would need, so therefore it doesn't require an earthing point. So let's have a quick unboxing and see what's inside. Right, so here we are inside the box. We have the charger unit itself, that's LED, uh, that's electrical connections, and at the side there, that's where you plug in your charger cable. Uh, in the bag, there is the CT clamp for uh, measuring input current, and uh, there's RFID tags in there uh, to operate the, uh, the charger. Interestingly, they've included some uh, ferrules for crimping on the end of the electrical cables for the electrical connections. So, all good. The next thing we need to do is to decide exactly where we're going to mount the EV charger unit. Um, this seems to be the best location. Um, putting it on the wall here. This is at the back of the house, at the back door, where we have a parking area. We can get two or three cars in there, so it seems ideal uh, right next to the, the back door, effectively. So the idea is to put the charging unit somewhere on the wall, round right about here, and uh, which ordinarily would be fine, but the problem that we have is that just immediately above that, there is a window ledge and a, and a, a window and uh, the water we do get exposed quite badly to the weather and the, the the rain and the water just runs down the window here off the window ledge of course it's going to run straight on top of the uh, charging unit so what we're uh, planning on doing is mounting the charging unit inside some kind of cabinet some kind of box on the wall there which will provide a level of protection for the um, charger unit but also provide some storage for charging cables uh, etc so um, let's get on with uh, installing the uh, the new box and the charging unit itself and as if by magic we have the uh, ABS storage box mounted on the wall and inside here is the uh, smart 7 charger we're just going to open up the box and have a quick look i do intend mounting uh, probably a cctv camera above that not that anybody's going to steal it but it's actually to monitor the uh, charging indicator in the front of my car uh, so there's the ev charger there's the socket on the side there for the type 2 cable but there's plenty of storage in there for a 5 or even a 10 meter charging cable uh, if you wanted to leave it in there that's the uh, type 2 connection on the side underneath i've still got the electrical connections to make so there's a, a brass gland there for the SWA cable the steel wire armored which is the mains cable direct from the new consumer unit and also uh, connection for the data cable, a Cat5e cable, coming from the CT clamp. Apologies for the change in camera orientation here, but this is the charging unit with the electrical connections complete. The internal cover is on it. 
This is the uh, sensor unit for the RFID tags. And above that is the LED strip, which indicates the state of charge. Obviously, on the side is the Type 2 socket. Now, let's go and have a look at the consumer unit end of the installation. Right, so we are in the house now at the main consumer unit. And uh, as you can see here, um, it's pretty busy. There are quite a few circuits. I've um, tried to mask off the installer's name. Um, but this installation was done quite a few years ago now and is due for a retest anyway. So uh, it's, a, it's a good time to, to be getting an electrician and to have a look at it. As you can see, there are quite a few uh, RCBOs in here. Um, this one here is a 40 amp, which was installed for the shower that we, uh, we used to have, an electric shower. And uh, it's now locked off. So that effectively is spare. Uh, there is also a spare at the uh, end of the row here. Um, so I could have used either one of those, probably the one that the shower is in, to connect in to my EV charger. However, um, because it is quite busy and the cable that's coming in is uh, uh, a steel wire armoured 6mm cross-sectional cable, uh, to carry the 30 amps that the charger is going to draw. I've decided to install a second consumer unit. This is effectively a, a, a garage type consumer unit. Um, it has a, a, an RCD at uh, 40 amps. It's a type A RCD, so it detects the DC components as well. And there is a 32 amp MCB uh, feeding the charging unit. Um, so obviously this is the outgoing steel wire armoured cable which um, goes off to the charging unit itself. Um, when I ran in the SWA cable I pulled in a Cat5e cable as well alongside it. This will effectively connect to the CT clamp. Obviously I'll cut the connector off that end of the cable and only use a couple of pairs out of it. The CT clamp will go somewhere on the incoming live connection. Uh, there's an isolator there. Uh, a couple of Henley blocks. Now, obviously, I haven't connected in the uh, new consumer yet. That's a, a job for a, a qualified electrician. So we're going to have an electrician visit in the next day or two to do all the electrical works um, at the consumer board, which will include connecting the meter tails, uh, which are currently lying loose above the, uh, the connectors there. Meter tails into those two Henley blocks, and uh, there's, the, uh, there's the loose cables there just now, but also um, connecting the earth cable back into the mains earth connection over there. So this is the CT clamp that comes with the Smart 7 EV charger. And uh, this allows the charger to adjust the amount of power it is drawing uh, from the mains uh, in the event of uh, the current level uh, exceeding a specific limit. Um, you see there's an arrow on that. The arrow needs to point effectively in the direction of the incoming uh, live as it comes in from... Well, I'm going to install it between the meter and the consumer units. And uh, that arrow indicates direction of flow. I've already wired it back into the Cat5e cable that I showed you earlier. And I'm now going to mount it on the cable before the Henley blocks. And there it is. So, uh, clamps on there. doesn't have to be firm around it. It's just based on any currents. There's a little clip around this side to make sure it's unsecure. So you can just leave it like that. And uh, I'm going to leave this ready for the electrician to come, uh, which should be tomorrow. Uh, everything's ready uh, to be wired in. And uh, we'll come back in a day or two and hopefully it'll be complete. 
Well, I'm delighted to say that the electrician has now been. He has inspected the uh, wiring and completed the installation into the mains. So we now have a fully functioning charger. I've tidied up the cables going into the box. There are two holes I had to drill into the uh, subfloor area. Um, these have been drilled at an angle going upwards so and also silicon sealed so there's no danger of any water running down there and then getting into the property itself let's have a quick look inside you'll see the cctv camera there that i did say i was going to install and there's the charger along with five meters of cable green light comes on there and that indicates that the uh, charger is ready for use um, there's five meters of cable, as I said. I'm going to upgrade that to 10 fairly soon. You'll see that the uh, membrane bungs that I've used in there are also siliconed up to avoid ingress of water. And up there, there is a small light that I've installed along with cabling for the CCTV camera. So the charger installation is now complete and I look forward to doing my first charge. Thanks for watching this episode on Twin Carbs and I hope we can see you all again very soon.